Thanks for coming out Sunday afternoon, Spanish for Gita. Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder and acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Aghirati Maranda Shyam Ganangana Salakya Chaksudhim Miritam Yana Tashmahi Shri Gurvedama Sri Chaitanya Manava Vistam Shapitam Yara Bhutare Sayam Rupa Karamayam Dharati Svaparantikam Our topic today is my name is gossip. We all have opportunities to make people look bad. Rumors float around. Things we don't know for sure are true, but it's just so tempting to repeat them anyway. It's not that we're a bad person. We're just telling what we heard. And it's easy to justify it because we're just telling the truth. Or maybe we do know something that's true. The person had a failure, made a mistake, made a poor decision. There's a lot of things, even though they're true, we don't need to tell them. Unless there's a victim involved, unless there's some harm done to another living being, we don't necessarily need to spread everything far and wide about an individual's own personal shortcomings. In fact, we should do our best never to go out of our way to show anybody in an unflattering light. And yet we live in a society that's filled with gossip, rumors, innuendo, chatter, people talking on the internet, talking on Facebook, talking at work, talking at school. Lots of people, nosy, busybodies. They love to get things all stirred up. And they have no problem repeating things that they know are only half true. On purpose, they'll leave out certain details just to prove their point. And if we're not careful, we lend an ear to this, we'll get pulled in and therefore become carriers of that poison. Did you hear what I heard? Oh boy, have I got some juicy news today. At that point, you do not go like this. <laughs> Someone comes up to you with tidbits, hot off the press, it's true. They lied, they cheated. Here's what you do. Nothing. <laughs> Don't go to your phone. Don't go to email. Don't call a friend. Don't expose them for personal, individual shortcomings. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita talks about austerity of the tongue. That means let it die with you. Let it stop with you. Let you not be a carrier, a conveyor. Every person, metaphorically speaking, carries either a bucket of water or a bucket of gasoline. And when you hear rumors, juicy gossip, you can either pour gasoline on it, add fuel to the fire, and make it worse, or you can do what Krishna suggests and pour water on it. I think today we'll all have to agree that too many people are using gasoline and flaming and fire. True, it's the truth. I'm just stating the facts. Yes, they may be guilty, but it is said that love covers a fault. Love doesn't expose. As long as there are no others involved, as long as there's no victims, then the opposite is the case. You have to speak what you know. But as far as individual shortcomings are concerned, we don't need to go tell everybody in the world how this person falls up short. We need to love them. We need to restore them back into wholeness, pour water on the fire rather than gasoline on the fire. Yes, they made a mistake, but Krishna can restore them. They messed up, but Krishna has new beginnings all the time. They did wrong, but why should I then add to their pain, rub salt in the wound, and make them look bad? I'm gonna show mercy and let it die with me. And when you know something negative about a person, it's so easy to show them in an unflattering light. But think of it this way. It's a test of your own integrity. How you respond is going to determine how high you go or how high you don't go in your own life. If you add fuel to the fire, tell all your friends, get everyone stirred up, then you're going to get stuck right at the point where you are. It is said, gossip dies at a wise person's ears. Krishna of God will not promote a gossip, a busybody, a fault finder. To get your bucket of water, 
put the fire out, then you will pass the test. Krishna will promote you. The real question is, when we hear juicy information, when it's hot off the press, are we going to use a little discipline, self-restraint, and let it die right there? We're fascinated, aren't we, with fire? We can sit in front of a fire for hours and hours and look at the flames. We just have a fixation. We just want to know what the fire is going to do. We're more fascinated with the fire, I think we'll all have to admit this, than we are with the water. We can watch the fire a lot longer and we can tickle our brains. I wonder what the fire would do if I did this or if I did that. We don't think that so much about the water. We have a natural curiosity to fan the flame and see what it will do <laughs> and where it will go. Fascinating as it may seem, it's always destructive. On the other hand, when you protect a reputation, you're sowing a seed for Krishna to protect your own reputation. If you give grace, then when you need grace, Krishna will arrange for it to be there for you. Karma means you get what you give. So you need to ask yourself two things. One is, do I know without a shadow of a doubt this is really true, or am I hearing it third, fourth, or even fifth hand? And the second thing is, even if it is true, is it absolutely necessary? If you're protecting victims, it is. Otherwise, it may not be. So do I really need to tell it, or do I just want to tell it? <laughs> Sometimes we say, I'm just going to tell this one friend. How can that hurt anything? <laughs> then that person will tell another person, and so on and so on and so forth. As it goes from one set of lips to one set of ears and one set of lips to another ears, there's going to be exaggerations, there's going to be distortions, things are going to get blown out of proportion. What's big will get bigger, what's bad will get worse. And when something comes to you, the best course is just don't believe everything you hear. Don't let people who are envious, jealous, or who can't handle success, poison you with their opinion of somebody else. Charu, did you hear so and such and such and such about so and so? No, I didn't hear. And if it isn't good, I don't want to hear. You should not let people fill you with a bunch of trash. Someone talks bad about a person, gossips, Put them down. Don't sit there and passively take it in. Say, no thanks, my ears are not trash cans. you got to put your foot down and not allow other people to poison your consciousness. read a story about a man who went to a priest and confessed that he had been doing a lot of gossiping lately. He wanted to know what he could do to atone for the gossiping. The priest told him to go to the top of a mountain, rip open a feather pillow, Turn the feathers loose in the wind and then come back the next day for another consultation. So the men did what he was told. He went to the top of the mountain. He tore open a feather pillow, scattered the feathers to the wind. The next day he went back to the priest and said, okay, I did that. Now what? The priest told him to go and collect all of the feathers. The man said, they're all over the county, if not all over the state by now. It's impossible. They're scattered everywhere. And the priest said, that, my friend, is the point. Once you begin to gossip, the words spread, they scatter to the wind, and they can never be undone. The words can never be taken back or retrieved. You don't know where they're going to go. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know where they're going to land. You don't know whom they're going to hurt. And consciousness is contagious. Your friends become reflections of you and vice versa. So if you hang around angry people, you're going to get angry. If you hang around gossipers and fault finders, hang around with nosy busybodies, that consciousness will infect you as well. I'll throw in a little joke here. They have a bumper sticker that says, if you hang around llamas, don't be surprised when spit happens. <laughs> I just couldn't resist inserting that one in there. So be careful who you associate with. A satsangi tyagi a Vaishnava Chara. Lord Chaitanya said, if you want to make spiritual advancement, build your character, the first thing is, give up the association of fault finders and critics and busy bodies and accept the association of people of integrity, people 
or aspiring for saintly character. Busy bodies, they all have an opinion about everything. They have an opinion about everyone, and they're going to give it to you whether you like it or not. They try to run everybody else's life. Truth is, they can't even run their own lives. You can be kind. You can be respectful to such a person, but don't listen to them. Don't hang around with them. Don't be fooled. If they'll talk about a third person in front of you, you can count on the fact that when they're not around you, they're talking about you to somebody else. After three years of research, Indiana University sociologist Donna Eder identified an important dynamic involved in gossip. She discovered that the initial negative statement was not the starting point of gossip. The critical turning point was found in the response to the initial negative statement. She's a real snob is not the start of gossip. It's when someone agrees that she's a real snob. That's when the gossip fest begins. She found the key is that whether or not a negative statement is seconded, then the gossip begins. Gossip person goes around with gasoline, but an honorable person uses water, tries to quell and not add to the rumors, defend to show mercy, to cover. A sannyasi, one who had taken a vow to live a celibate life, fell down with a girl in Australia. His name was Madhavisa. He was made to feel very, very bad about his transgression, his fall down, so bad that in shame he left the movement. When, when word reached Prabhupada, our spiritual master, Prabhupada cried. He said, you should have shown him kindness, should have showed him mercy. If he has trouble controlling his senses, let him get married and continue Krishna consciousness as a householder. But he should have never been made to feel shamed and have left the movement. If I hear someone talking about a member of the Krishna community, I will do everything I can to, first of all, give them the benefit of the doubt. They may have faults, but they're taking the medicine. If you're sick, but you're in the hospital, you can't necessarily be criticized for being sick because you're taking the steps to cure yourself, to get over the disease. I will recognize that members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness are taking the cure, taking the therapy. True, I saw one of your members try to run me off the road last week. I'm sure they didn't mean to. They probably were just chanting on their beads or something, <laughs> got, got distracted. No, true, they were honking their horn, their fist up in the air. And I said, oh, they were probably had a kirtan on the CD and they were <laughs> chanting. <laughs> Similarly, just like with fellow devotees, with your friends and your family members, don't pour gasoline, pour water. That's the way you need to be. Krishna sends the people into your life as a test to see whether you can nourish them back into wholeness, not cut them off and condemn them. Treat people as God would treat them, with mercy, with kindness. Give them a little taste of the unconditional love of the spiritual realm. I'll never forget when we first started the Festival of Colors, we started getting big crowds around 2008. I remember reading a Facebook comment by someone who'd been to the festival. He said, I never was at such an event where nobody cared who you were, what you looked like, or where you came from. Everybody just accepted you unconditionally. And I thought, yes, that's what the Festival of Colors is all about. Coming up March 25th and 26th. <laughs> Yeah, give people a little taste of the unconditional love of the spiritual world. This is where I took the title from the talk today. You could all read it together. My name is Gossip. I have no respect for justice. I maim without killing. I break hearts and ruin lives. I am cunning and malicious and gather strength with age. I flourish at every level of society. My victims are helpless. They cannot protect themselves against me because I have no face. To track me down is impossible. The harder you try, the more elusive I become. I'm nobody's friend. Once I tarnish a reputation, it's never the same. I topple governments, wreck marriages, ruin careers, cause sleepless nights, heartaches, and indigestion. I spawn suspicion and generate grief. I make innocent people cry on their pillows. Even my name, gossip, hisses. Before you report your story, ask yourself, number one, is it true? 
Number two, is it fair? Number three, is it necessary? If not, zip it up. Bob Dylan said, it's easy to kick people when they're down. It's easy to be judgmental. It's easy to say, I told you so. But the honorable thing is to stay on the high road, help restore them, help bring peace. In the Bible, we have the story of Noah, apparently being all those days on the ark with all the animals, it took its toll. And as soon as they hit dry land, the first thing it's described he did was he got crazy drunk and he passed out naked in a tent. Okay? Now, one of his two sons, Ham, came, pulled the tent flap open, called everybody. Hey, look at dad. He's lying dead drunk, naked in the tent. His other son shooed everyone away, covered his father, and put the flap back over the tent. Noah cursed Ham and his descendants never to inherit his property, and he blessed the other son. But we make the choice to make people look bad, to damage their reputation. Here's a thought. You can even show honor when honor is not earned. After all, everybody is a divine spark of God. Everybody has royal blood flowing in their brains. Everybody is a child of the most high God. Even if they're off track, even if they're not on at the moment, they are still from a royal heritage. They still have noble potential. So on the basis of that potential, not necessarily what they're doing right now or who they are right now, but whose they are and who they come from, you can even consider showing honor where honor is not earned. Maybe what that person did deserves shame, but if you don't add to the shame, you will be blessed, you will be prospered, you will be in a position of honor, you will be able to position them in such a way that they can get back up again sooner rather than later. In the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, we see fellow devotees, as what we're called, as our eternal family. And Prabhupada said that any devotee is following the principles, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, no meat eating, is on the platform of immortality. And all they have to do is continue on that platform and go back to home, back to God. But if they fall, they are not to be condemned, they're not to be cut off, they're not to be disowned, they're not to be written off or sidelined. If they fall, they just get back up again, that's all. All they have to do is continue. If a devotee falls, then it's up to every other devotee to make sure they get the support they need to get back on their feet and keep moving forward. Devotees are meant to cover others' faults, pray for their restoration, not go out, expose them, blow it up bigger. It's true, true, they're guilty, they're wrong. But hey, Krishna consciousness or any spiritual path, it's not for perfect people. If we were perfect, we wouldn't have to be here in the first place. If you're healthy, you don't need to be in the hospital. The hospital's for sick people. So don't criticize, don't blow it up bigger that someone's not perfect, because this is the hospital for people who are not perfect. When someone's not perfect, when someone falls, those who are presently strong at least, their job is to gently restore them, give them support, pick them up. If you do that for others, then when you stumble, Krishna will make sure somebody's there to pick you up when you need it. It's so easy to go along with the crowd, be judgmental, expose people, be critical. But remember this, according to the law of what goes around, comes around, the same amount of mercy that you show others is the same amount of mercy that will come full circle and you'll receive. So be selfish, be generous with your mercy, be a protector. Let's be friends who can be counted on, who stick with others who thick and thin to protect, to defend, to cover. Especially considering we live in a society that likes to kick people when they're down. When you criticize someone, be careful because faults can be contagious. If you dwell on somebody else's faults, be careful because you may be subject to that fault in the future. Don't be a fair weather friend. People need you more in the tough times than they need you in the good times. When you've been exposed to somebody who's done wrong and you go on and on and on and talk more and more and more about it, then what happens is you're dwelling on that same fault. If you don't want to catch what they have, 
Here's the vaccine. Mercy. Mercy. Mercy is what's going to keep us from doing the exact same thing down the road that we criticized someone else for. I remember when I was young, Joan Baez, Judy Collins used to sing that song. There but for fortune goes you or I. Let me change the words and say there but for mercy goes you or I. When someone helps a child get them back on course, when they're kind to that child, forgiving, merciful, then there's nothing that parent would not do for the person that helped his child out. That parent would be so grateful. That parent would go to any length to do anything that person asked. In the same way, when you stick up for Krishna's children, our Heavenly Father appreciates. When you defend Krishna's children, when you help restore Krishna's children, when you restore the reputation of one of Krishna's devotees, there's nothing that Krishna will not do for you. When you're generous, in other words, with your mercy, you'll always have the special blessings of God. Mercy sets the tone for blessings. Our challenge to us all today, including myself, is that when you hear a word against your family, against your friend, against other devotees, be disciplined and let it die right there. Be a person of honor. Don't let people gossip around you, complain around you, fault find in your area. Because you choose the water and not the gasoline. You choose mercy and not condemnation because you cover faults, protect reputations rather than expose them. Krishna will honor and bless you to become everything you are meant to be and accomplish everything he created you to accomplish in this life, and I believe next life, you'll go back to home, back to God. Any of that sounded good to you? Raise your arms along with me, and let's all say the names of the Lord together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.